Why are all these different sizes of quick links rated the same when you're pulling crossload? Check it out on this episode of How Not to Highline. Hi, I'm Ryan Jinx and welcome to my gear room. Today on this episode, we're gonna share a bunch of slack snap tests that we did because we were curious why the ratings of these quick links, which are all different for this direction, but all the same for cross load. Yen Camus from Bliss Climbing brought this up on his YouTube channel. How come they are all 10 kilonewtons across? So Yen hit me up and asked me if I would do some break tests. So he sent me a bunch of different quick links and we tested them. We tested some seven millimeter quick links from Mayon, and then the eight and 10 millimeter quick links were from Camp. One of the struggles that we had by testing crossload is it wanted to twist as we pulled. So we had to get quite creative in order to pull it in such a way that it wouldn't twist on us. And it ended up creating some unique shapes as basically steel will bend quite a bit before it snaps, unlike aluminum, just snaps. And so, we had some twists, but most of them were successful. So let's go over all the numbers so we can find out why they're all rated the same. The seven millimeter quick link, the long one, is rated for 25 kilonewtons. That one cross-loaded broke at 25 kilonewtons because we were able to, we're changing the shape so much when we brake test this stuff. And then the short seven millimeter quick link that we tested broke at 48.2 kilonewtons cross-loaded. So we had similar results with the eight millimeter quick link, which is rated for 40 kilonewtons. And when we cross-loaded it, we got uh, 37 kilonewtons, 43 kilonewtons, and almost 39 kilonewtons. And the one that got 43, that twisted when we pulled it. And so that basically got it to pull in the direction it's supposed to be. And then when we did test them normal, the way you're supposed to use them, we were getting above 40. 44 and 43 kilonewtons. Well, almost 44 technically. So then the 10 millimeter quick links, these ones, they were breaking pretty high. Cross loaded, they're rated for 45 kilonewtons, supposedly. Yeah, 45. And the first one broke at 54.75. The next one was 47.76. And then the other crossload we did was 52.85. We did do a D-link that we broke at 56.95. And then we tried to pull it normal, you know, to find out if it's 45. We got 59.75 kilonewtons before the soft shackle broke. And since I didn't want to slacrifice any more soft shackles and Really nothing else is gonna fit in there. Maybe a 72 kilonewton carabiner, but I don't really wanna compromise those. They're pretty expensive. I use them for bolt busters. Basically anything above 60 kilonewtons is um, super good enough. Stronger than any rope you're connecting to this. So we got great results with all these quick links regardless of how we pulled them. And we only hand tighten these. They are recommended in some situations that you wrench them tight, but I think that's more from it vibrating and oscillating and coming unscrewed. Because if they were not screwed tight, then you're going to lose a lot of strength uh, because this nut does quite a bit. That is going to cause problems. However, why is it super strong being pulled this way? Well, I don't actually think it's rated for breaking at 10 kilonewtons. I think once it hits 10 kilonewtons, you're not unnutting it. The nut will be basically, um, it's gonna bend so much that you're not gonna be able to use your, your product anymore. And I think that's why it's rated all the same. I don't quite think seven, uh, the seven millimeter quick links, they start to deform a little bit before 10 kilonewtons. Um, I also wonder if they also struggled to test these cross-loaded uh, when they standardize the tests, um, because it's really hard with this nut in the way to be pulling this way without, because as soon as it starts to bend, it wants to twist. So either way, even if this got cross-loaded in any orientation on any of those sizes, it's stronger than any dynamic climbing rope you're attaching to this or possibly any device. Um, Yen Camus 
uses this in his solo aid um, ventures. And he has a school, kind of like I have my Highline University school, he has a school for solo aid climbing. So if you're really into solo aid climbing, uh, I highly recommend that course. It's one thing to go climbing by yourself, but you really shouldn't try to learn this stuff by yourself. And as far as highlining goes, if you're connecting these two hangers in order to thread your rope through, you it's not just the strength of the quick link. Um, these are technically 25 kilonewtons, which is technically stronger than the rope. Um, this made me feel better. This is a six millimeter, uh, and it is definitely stronger than my rope when I remember to close them. And then um, this is ridiculously strong. However, if you look at these, the bend radius changes the strength of your rope. And so I actually like going with eight or 10 millimeter quick links, even though it's not just about strength. And that's something we've learned on bolt busters is it's how all the components work together, not just individual items all just have to look good on a spreadsheet. So if you add a rope to this, you're gonna actually reduce the strength of your rope almost by maybe 20, 30% of what you could have gotten if you used this quick link. None of these are probably gonna break. None of them are gonna break if you close them right. But they just don't make your anchor as strong as they need to be. I did highline on five millimeters for quite a while. Um, you're not gonna die. It's just, they look like keychains, right? So um, respect your life. Um, since you only have one of them and uh, use something that's a little bit more bomber. 